Hello and welcome back everyone to Bloodstained Ritual the Night Hard Mode Fresh on Rocket Rabbit Commentaries. And in this episode we have successfully made it to the Hidden Desert. The first major difficulty spike in any playthrough of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Okay. I've said it before and I'll say it multiple more times throughout this fucking playthrough. But the big issue that Hard Mode brings up is enemy density. And the big issue that Hidden Desert had originally was enemy density. So they decided to double down on enemy density being a big fucking problem. Um, you'll notice that it doesn't seem so bad in these first couple of rooms, but then you get into, not this room specifically, but, uh, a, a, a couple of rooms from now, you will start to see that, uh, yeah, they actually added in a bunch, a bunch of additional more a uh, Amy's, uh, into the floating rooms. Uh, uh, and, uh, that, that gets to be a bit of an issue as we're going through, because Miriam on hard mode is actually much more susceptible to status ailments. Specifically, slow and poison. Hmm. Yes. Now, which are the two primary status ailments that are, you know, in the hidden desert? Here's what I've turned up on the monsters. Also, we have uh, kill quest to turn into Lindsay. Here's your reward. Steal. Here's what I've turned up on the monsters. Mm -hmm. The speed build is actually very important. It's a, it's the primary accessory that I'll be using uh, going into the next major boss fight. Speed belt. It increases your overall movement speed, which is very, very nice. Well, I tell you, nothing slows me down like having my pants starting to sag below my waist because I didn't wear a belt. What are we transmuting this time? All right. So, what are we attempting to craft at the moment? I think. Are we attempting to actually go and, uh, and actually make Shrider at the moment? I think so. Yeah, we're trying to make Shrider, but we don't actually have the crystal for it yet, so... Ch... 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 Cheddar? No, no, Shider. Because it looked like Cheddar. No, 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 because it's S-C-H, so Shy. So Shedder. If you want to call it Shedder, then sure, but it's not, because it doesn't actually have a D in it. Or rather, yeah, it, yeah, it's uh, S C H E D R, a D E R. I was gonna say, I've heard of cheese knives, but this is ridiculous. Uh, especially since it's not hot; it's ice elemental. It's made out of cheese. It's not made out of cheese. It's made out of you know deep. Uh, it's made out of a uh, demon infused ice. So demon cheese. Not even demon cheese. Dang it. I bet the demons right, would make some other... We're now showing off the, uh, uh, the uh, drink recipes that we need. We need a uh, beast milk for... Well, we need beast milk for all of them. So I think we're not going to be showing off us doing the beast milk farm on uh, this part because I'm pretty sure we end up uh, doing the beast milk farm off screen. Uh, specifically because farming for beast milk is not something that actually takes all that long, but it's not something that I feel the need to show off. <laughs> you know what kind of... Ch <laughs> you know what kind of cheese demon's milk would make? <laughs> it would make Munster. <laughs> Are you sure they wouldn't make feta cheese? I have something new to offer you. Hmm. What are you looking Probably to closer to. Well, I mean, it can't make Gouda cheese unless it's one of those deceptive demon's milk cheeses. So instead of actually farm, uh, farming up for a bunch of the stuff that that we need, uh, we're actually gonna go buy. We're actually gonna buy a bunch of cooking recipes and it, and attempt to uh, get some and attempt to get some uh, uh, attempt to get some bonus stats uh, this way. Uh, oh, that's right. We have uh, yeah. We can actually go and uh, buy the Schrader. We don't have we don't have to make it. So sell an obsidian. Come on, what other crafting mats do we have more than not. units of? Melting bone. This is Monster small webbing. bird hair. Is there any thanks? What are you looking to buy? And with that, we should. Well, no, we're. Uh, we, yeah, that's right. We want to. We want to buy uh, a full suite of potions uh, before we attempt to buy. Uh, before we attempt to buy uh, uh, weapons. I would think stone stone thaw would be a worthy investment. Stone thaw, you would uh, you would think would be a worthy investment if it weren't for two specific things. 
There are a total of four enemies in the game that can inflict you with uh, with stone, and only one of them is and only one of, one of them inflicts stone at a relevant time. And that enemy is the malediction. And the only reason and the only time the malediction inflicts stone at, at a relevant time is while you're going through the uh, the, to the tower of twin dragons, which and we, we already did. Yeah, and we've already you know uh, finished that area. So plus. Stone throw doesn't actually matter, especially when you remember that uh, you can accelerate. Uh, you can accelerate uh, the the rate at which Miriam naturally breaks out of a petrification by spamming the directional pad. Hmm. This has been a mechanic in uh, in every of the Egovania games since, at the very least, Aria of Sorrow. I'm not good at it, mind you, but it has been there. The question is, how ready are you to diddly woobly wobbly your control stick when your character is in certain peril? I'm usually I'm usually very ready for it. So, oh, that's right. We actually need to go make a Gondo. Uh, she's a Nori. Yep. Yeah. So we made a Gondo. She's a Nori. And the reason why we did this is very specifically because for the for the upcoming boss fight, the original plan was to use the Gondo Shizanori as a special spell in order to, you know, cheese it the fuck out. This partially works, but not for this part. We are gonna see the next the next big boss fight in this part. Uh, but um, I'm gonna spoil it now. We don't clear it because the the next boss is either the most or second most difficult boss in the entire game on hard mode. I will say that it's even more powerful than the secret boss that uh, that Cloud had uh, that Cloud specifically had me go take down, even though I was apprehensive about doing it. Oh yeah, I remember that. I I, I told you, uh, great great challenge brings great reward. Nah, I still don't believe you. Well, you did it. That's I did good. it, but but the reward that I got for it was something that I already knew I wasn't going to use. Ah, e even without the uh, even without the steroid of having uh, effectively infinite mana regen, uh, Inferno Breath is honestly a really a really good uh, a spell to have uh, for just traveling around. Specifically because of how uh, of how reliable it is in dealing with uh, rather potent threats like these Alistair. The uh, I know that it's I know that it's a spelled Alistair and it's probably pronounced Alistair, but I always consider that the fact. That Alistair is effectively a single character off from being Alistair, and, and Alistair has been a, has been a recurring demon in the Egovania franchise ever since Aria of Sorrow. So, uh, not to mention we are in a European type setting, which means that it could do that weird Celtic thing where it pronounce it, it actually pronounces the consonant C as with a K sound. So it would be Alakir. It could be Alakir, couldn't it? Like Alakir. Or Killian. Or Skilla. Uh, I, I, it's definitely not Killian. Lasting Wound. This is a spell that we will never actually see because I don't like using the daggers. Actually, that's Rapier. Yeah, that's, that's one of the... That's, uh... Or is that actually Short Sword? That might be Short... No, it's definitely not uh. Short Sword because it is tied to, uh, the same command that the Bandit Blade back to you. Oh, this is us so being slow. inflicted with slow. Uh, we are no longer inflicted with slow. Thank God. Uh, slow, despite it being extremely potent um, in the upcoming boss fight, is only potent in that boss fight. Mostly because there's a total of, well, two enemies in the game that can inflict you with slow. They're both fucking here. Lift, please. Thank you. Go over here, do a bit more Mac and Mac. Oh, we will Christ. come back to this room much later on because I wanted to show off the DLC, and uh, this room is one of the entrances to one of the DLCs. Uh, the Megaton Hammer Room. One of my favorite and most memorable rooms in the Fire Temple Ocarina of Time. I've never cleared the Fire Temple in Ocarina of Time. <laughs> I have a long-standing grudge against Ocarina of Time, and it's not even really Ocarina of Time's fault. Because, you see, I get to... I beat Forest Temple, right? And then immediately after I beat Forest Temple, I get lost. I have no idea how the hell to get either of the two uh, tunics after you beat Forest Temple. Mm. Alright. Equip the Gondo Shizanori. Equip nothing else, because we want to show off how poorly this fight fucking goes. Hey, Alfred. 
Hey. Miriam. Yeah, Alfred wasn't expecting us here. He was expecting someone else uh, to catch up with him. I commanded you to leave this place. Yeah, but you also commanded me to, st to stay asleep for ten years, so fuck you. And I intend to keep it. Very well. This sigil was not meant for you, but we are far enough from the castle that it can contain you here. Goodbye, Miriam. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, uh, he gets a, he gets to jump on you by throwing that uh, by throwing that uh, that uh, that uh, poison vial at you. Um, to be perfectly honest, that's actually supposed to be a hint in what how, in how you're supposed to do this fight the the correct way. Alfred specifically is vulnerable to poison. He is uh, he and several of the other bosses in the game are specifically vulnerable to uh, both poison and, believe it or not, slow. Thing is, if you ever get to land the slow on Alfred, something terribly something has gone terribly wrong. Scrumptious. So here I'm showing off that uh, in order to even pretend to actually fight Alfred fairly, I am I save up a bunch of I save up a, a bunch of my first time food options beforehand. Um, you'll notice that Alfred has got this red glowing aura on him that doubles his damage. Yay. And it doubles his armor. Yay. Fuck this fight. Yay. This fight on hard mode is is the second or first, uh, the second or hardest fight in the entire game. Because uh, you'll notice that uh, you'll notice that we can't really get up, uh, up to him in order to deal a, a great amount of damage, even though even though he no longer has his armor buff on. Uh, because Alfred's entire gameplay strategy is to use his, inc his increased mobility and uh, and his uh, and his coverage in order to make it so it's imp virtually impossible for us to actually uh, uh, stay on top of him. Technique master. And we're out of MP. Damn it. Uh. So we can't do the stabby stabs. We can't do stabby stabs anymore because we no longer have MP. As I tell you, those, the, those... the big thing that I always have problems with is the fact that. Uh, that Alfred has access to every status ailment in the game. He gets slow, he gets poison, and he gets cursed. He also gets petrification, but petrification is not actually all that big of a deal for him because, you know, uh, all of... Uh, same with poison, to be perfectly honest. But curse and slow are the big ones that you have to worry about. He doesn't start using slow until until he's in the phase two, though. But you'll notice that um, it's extremely difficult at this point to tell where the fuck are, are, are these damage zones. Uh, specifically for his ice and fire, uh, ice and fire pot, and I'm Oops, still I'm having dodging. problems even at, e e even getting close to him at this point. No, we're also, cursed again. Uh, I have been I have been told that it is possible to dodge a cursed order just by sl uh, just by sliding after it uh, comes at you, but in multiple cases uh, through this fight, I have proven that no, you still you still have to slide. Uh, against the path yeah. that it's going, it and comes. it's extremely difficult to figure out what path that is because, well, it, he gets to attack you in a 3D space, whereas you are locked to a 2D space to attack him. Oh, geez, it better not that that thing better not happen where like we just took a shitload of healing items right before the boss dies. No, he's not even in phase two yet, Cloud. What the fuck? I know yeah, we, we've he, been stabbing and blabbing and slapping and grabbing, but he's still yeah. up. Uh, okay, so any second now, he's gonna go to stage two. You sure? He has old man health. Uh, no, no, he does not. Damn it. I really wish that I was better at the Alfred fight because the Alfred fight is one of the, it is uh is the big reason why I can't actually clear uh the game on hard mode with uh with Bloodless. Uh, I want for the bloodless run. Uh, the original plan was to actually show off hard mode to show off the uh, different boss patterns. Here we go. Here's phase two. Behold, five different slow zones. On normal, he only has three. <laughs> yes, and not many but, spaces in between either. Okay, well that no, won't No, there's expire. plenty of space in between. It's just that Miriam has to traverse through the slow zones in order to get to them. Potion. We no longer have healing <laughs> items. Fight's over. Uh, you might want to take some ether there. Why? The fight's over. I can't. I can't possibly. I can't possibly kill him anymore. What do you mean? You, you're still in the game. Fuck him. All right. How do I approach him? Just fucking try. 
You know what it is is that maybe like when he dodges to when he's when he die when he teleports that you just go it oh and we're dead. Oh, yeah, well. we're dead. We gave it In a the shot. Next well, part, at least we will we... actually we will actually either kill Alfred or continue to do the grinding to get enough power to kill Alfred. I forget which. Be safe everybody. Well, at least we got all of our healing items back.